Hey guys, welcome back to today's video. Today is Wednesday, July 21st, 2021, and today we're going to be talking about rural Democrats and the Democratic Party's previously much stronger reach within the rural regions around the nation. Now, I first want to say that if I do sound a little harsh or a little loud, that I apologize. I am currently on vacation in Virginia Beach, so I am recording at a desk, and it does echo a little bit. I have noticed um, I don't have anywhere else to record, so I do apologize if that seems to be a little bit annoying. I would say that for me, it helped when I turned down the volume. That way you weren't hearing it feedback as much. Um, but I did try to position my microphone in a way that it wasn't as bad as it could have been. But I do apologize in advance if you do find it to be of annoyance. It won't be like that in just a few days. But we're going to be looking at the rural Democratic Party, more so um, the failures of it over the past couple of years, the past couple of elections in which the Democratic Party really hasn't been able to win back this region after losing it by a very large amount after the 2016 presidential election, where Donald Trump switched a lot of these counties from red, uh, sorry, from blue to red and has kept them red in elections all in between in state Senate elections, state House elections, House of Representatives elections, uh, Senate elections and the 2020 presidential election and to a point where it doesn't even seem as if many of these counties are going to swing back. You can also take a look at the bellwether counties in the 2020 presidential election. Many of these are a mix between urban and rural areas, but because of the overwhelming rural shift in favor of Donald Trump again in 2020, you find those bellwether counties all predicted Trump was going to win, even though he did not, which in a sense, does remove that bellwether status from it, but I do want to point that out because many of those counties can be classified under this region. But let's take a look. So when I saw this article from Yahoo News, they say that rural Democrats run from party ahead of 2022 midterms. Essentially, what Democrats are doing to push themselves away from nationally polarizing figures such as Nancy Pelosi, Joe Biden, Kamala Harris, Chuck Schumer. And we have seen this. This is not something new. If you followed my channel back in 2018, you might remember that senators such as John Tester, Joe Manchin, Sherrod Brown did not like to invoke the names of Nancy Pelosi, Chuck Schumer, uh, other Democrats, you know, Hillary Clinton, they avoided using them as uh, reasons as to why voters should back them. Because while that may be a winning strategy in a Clinton state or a previously Democratic state such as Pennsylvania, Michigan, Wisconsin, Nevada, New Hampshire, it certainly was not a winning strategy in Ohio and West Virginia and Montana, especially in the 2016 presidential election. Many Democrats do like to hide the fact that they are Democrats from their voters until it gets down to the final ballot. I don't know how many of you closely watched politics, but there was this um, campaign sort of documentary about a, a candidate in West Virginia who went around knocking on doors, talking to voters based off voting issues alone. And many of them found out that they agreed with that candidate. And at the end of the conversation had told them, I'm running as a Democrat. Many of the people said, I'm not voting for you solely because of that, even though they agreed on him with every single thing that he brought up, they simply wouldn't back him because of how the Democratic Party was perceived and is perceived across rural America. West Virginia, Montana, North Dakota, South Dakota, states that used to have very large, um, uh, not necessarily very large, uh, Democratic representatives or Democratic majorities, even in the state legislatures, that simply don't have them anymore. States that we now call ancestrally Democratic on certain statewide races. While they may have voted Republican on the presidential level, in 2008, McCain won North and South Dakota, yet two Democrats represented both of those states in single district states. And they also had at least one senator from the Democratic Party in those two states. So I want you to keep that in mind. When you take a look at some of these states that now have reduced down to having much less Democratic support, uh, sorry, much less Democratic uh, representatives, largely because of the way the Democratic Party is perceived. They mentioned Tim Ryan running in this three minute ad saying never once that he is running as a Democrat, essentially just trying to run on an issue oriented campaign, a very similar fashion that we are seeing from some of these other potential candidates. It says here that uh, Monica Trinnell is seeking a second seat in Montana after they picked up one from the census results. Her ad declares, quote, so many people I grew up with don't vote for Democrats anymore, end quote. Uh, and then again saying they feel like Democrats look down on rural America. Think about how Democrats are perceived for just a moment and you can see sort of why these portions of the country don't exactly like the rest of the Democratic Party. When you think about Nancy Pelosi, when you think about Chuck Schumer, you think about West Coast, San Francisco elite, 
and then you think about East Coast, old money type of elite, and having those two represent the Democratic Party really doesn't help their message towards rural America. When you have a California representative as the Speaker of the House, while well, she was and is one of the most powerful women in American politics and was duly elected by the Democratic Party in the House of Representatives to be in the speakership. And while Chuck Schumer doesn't exactly have this backstory that would come off as him being um, to the equivalent of some type of elite who was propped up in his political position without any type of experience or any type of actual care for a state or district, as you can find with many representatives across the nation, you know, Besides that, it's just optics, and that's exactly what Americans care about. That's exactly what American politics is all about. So I can absolutely see why rural America would view as if Democrats look down on them. And when you, when you think about the criticism from the Democratic Party, or at least members of it, towards the rest of the nation, especially following the 2020 House elections, I mean, when you take a look, you can't see the county-by-county county basis here, but when you talk about which portions of a state are driving it towards the left um, and which portions the Democratic Party really focuses on, they typically only focus on rural areas. You will rarely find a Democrat openly campaigning in Georgia's, uh, what, you know, district with Marjorie Taylor Greene. I think this is either a first, second, third district, or the 14th district. I'm not entirely sure. Um, but point being, the Democrats don't exactly focus a lot of attention on rural America like they used to. And you can see that these voters have negatively responded to that. I want to show you the 2008 House election results in which Democrats had their largest majority in the 21st century. Look at all of that blue. This is the 2020 House election results. Democrats still have the majority, but a lot less blue. Not the same exact district, so yes, gerrymandering did make a play into it. The New York University study that I cited this morning showed that 17 districts were won by Republicans primarily because of redistricting, meaning they otherwise would have gone to Democrats, but this is about a 30-seat difference. So not just those 17 seats, but many of these were rightfully lost by the Democratic Party because of their party change, because these voters were inherently conservative and still backed Democrats because they liked these individual Democrats and they weren't as angry with Nancy Pelosi. She was much popular at this point in time than she is today. I will also point that out. So to use her as some type of polarizing figure then might have worked in certain districts, but not in all of them. And the thing is, when you're taking a look at the Democratic reduction, it comes from primarily rural areas. Take a look at West Virginia. Take a look down in the South. Take a look at North and South Dakota. Take a look at Idaho for crying out loud. It was crazy to think about that a Democrat could even win in the state of Idaho. Today, both of those districts stand as overwhelmingly Republican districts because the state itself is overwhelmingly Republican. But at the end of the day, when you're looking at many of these individual districts and the losses by the Democratic Party, just the same regions that the districts are drawn in, because it's not the exact same, but it provides context as to just the sheer amount of support the Democrats lost. If you actually want to see the 2008 to 2010 shift, you'll see all of that red, all of that red now pick up. All of these previously Democratic districts, which are no longer in that case, North and South Dakota haven't been won by a Democrat since on the House of Representatives level. When you look at a number of these regions, all picked up by the GOP. A 63-seat gain from 2008. And Democrats haven't been able to recover from these portions of the nation. And this largely happened when Donald Trump shifted many of these rural counties towards the right. Barack Obama did a very good job at holding on to many of these regions across the United States, or at least putting up a good fight. But once Hillary Clinton was chosen as the nominee, she came off to many voters as disingenuous, someone who didn't care about anyone beyond either herself or the inner cities, beyond the Democratic strongholds, and these rural voters negatively responded to it. In addition, rural voters have always been more conservative. Democrats also used to be more conservative. However, when Donald Trump put out this idea that a candidate should not be politically correct, that the Republican nominee for president was going to say and do whatever he wanted without repercussion, many of these voters jumped on board. Because many of the things that Donald Trump did say, they might have particularly individually agreed with. But when applied to a number of 
his policies, which made him seem uh, to them as if he was going to take care of rural voters. Um, they could have agreed or disagreed with individual points, but it was the main policy, the main form of campaigning, and the political outsiderness of Donald Trump that really won him over many of these voters that previously were not Republican voters, or maybe were back and forth that are overwhelmingly Republican voters. In addition, Donald Trump has a grip on his supporters from 2016 and 2020 that is unwavering. Donald Trump was able to treat them as a different type of group. These are Trump voters. These are people that many on the left would describe, um, I would say, to not try to imply this in a negative fashion, but as a cult, to try to say that voters on the right wing are allegiant to President Trump. And I don't think that characterization, that they will follow him um, you know, to vote for certain candidates, to vote for Republican ideologies, et cetera, I don't think you know, they are wrong about that characterization. I wouldn't go so far as to try to describe this as a cult to say that these voters are inherently negative um, for X, Y, and Z, that's more of a policy-related issue, and that's more of a partisan statement rather than just a characterization of a group of voters. But these voters are unrelenting Trump supporters. They will certainly uh, back him through a number of initiatives, including the ones that he's doing now, the election fraud claims, the uh, backing of Republicans in the 2022 midterm elections. The point being that Donald Trump was able to capture these voters away from the Democratic Party, and they have not shifted back. We have seen no sign that these voters are moving back towards the Democratic Party. The only voters that are moving back towards the Democrats, in fact, are suburban voters, are white voters. And that is a very significant portion of the electorate, but the point being that Democrats aren't doing better amongst rural demographic groups in 2020. If you take a look at the shift from 2016, many rural counties shifted towards the left, but about the same amount shifted towards the right. About the same amount shifted towards the right in states such as Arkansas. You know, you can see some even splits in Missouri, some even splits in states such as Iowa or Nebraska or South Dakota or North Dakota. Yes, some rural areas incrementally shifted towards the left. I mean, you're talking about a three-point shift towards the left, but many of them also shifted towards the right. So Democrats recognize this. What do they do? They know that they can't win by running as the standard type of Democrat because they have not been able to do well with Biden as the nominee, with Clinton as the nominee, or even with Democrats in 2018 or individual smaller elections in 2017 or 2021. That's why some of these rural Democrats are abandoning the Democratic ideology. Um, when you look at the way that John Tester and Joe Manchin campaigned in 2018. I mean, while John Tester has a pretty strong voting record with the, De with the Democratic Party, it's almost as if he represents a state, you know, neighboring, close to neighboring state of Washington or Minnesota or Oregon because of his voting record. But if you look specifically at the way that they campaign, Joe Manchin and John Tester, the point is that they are Democrats who will stand up to the elites. That's what some of these Democrats are trying to be. If you look at history, though, it hasn't worked out well for many of these Democrats. Many of them are no longer here. Here is our Senate map after the 2008 Senate elections. Democrats had 59 seats and Republicans had 41. Democrats had seats in North Dakota, both of them, South Dakota, Nebraska, I mean, Arkansas, Louisiana, Missouri, West Virginia. They had two in West Virginia. Today they have one, which is why I'm pointing it out. But the point is, that many of these states, which are typically characterized as either a part of the Red Wall or rural states, no longer have a lick of Democratic representation in United States Congress, either on the House level, on the Senate level, and haven't been won by a Democrat on the presidential level in the entirety of the 21st century. That's Nebraska. That's South Dakota. That's North Dakota. That's Missouri. That's Arkansas. That's Louisiana. And for some of these states, which are also classified as rural, such as Montana, which have two Democratic senators in 2008, now only have one. West Virginia is included. And some of these other states, which are a part of the Midwest, for example, Ohio and Indiana, yes, they have Sherrod Brown in Ohio, but he is in a competitive state. And Indiana no longer has a Democratic representative. Wisconsin now has a Republican one. Pennsylvania also has a Republican one. Michigan has two Democrats. 
Illinois has two Democrats. Iowa has zero Democrats uh, in the United States Senate. And then in the House, they only have one out of the four. In 2018, they had three out of the four. So in rural regions across the United States, the reduction of support is very noticeable. In areas in which Democrats used to be able to win because they had crossover support, they simply no longer have it. And now, former Demo uh, former ca congressional candidates such as J.D., Shalton, I believe that's how you pronounce the name, or Shalton, um, are now founding these efforts in order to elect Democrats in rural regions by running on policy issue campaigns or, or, or issue based campaigns. Ruralvote.org is one of those, says for rural people, by rural people, essentially trying to invite people to help join, to have rural Democrats be elected on this level by running campaigns that are not similar to the likes of Nancy Pelosi, Chuck Schumer, or any other type of Democrat in urban areas or even suburban areas. Because that type of campaigning, that type of uh, elite strategy that normally is employed won't work in rural regions across the country. Democrats have seen a significant decline in support in these rural regions, and they need to be able to win them back if they want to be able to win elections in these districts in the future. But it doesn't look like Democrats are going to do everything they can at this point. Yes, there are some Democrats out there who are seemingly trying, and there are Democrats who are clearly trying to disassociate themselves from the National Democratic Party. But at the end of the day, the Democratic Party's main voting base does come from urban and suburban regions, which is why they are likely to be focused on the most. The way that American politics is working for both parties is that it's a self-reinforcing cycle. Rural voters positively respond to Republicans, so Republicans positively respond to rural voters. They have a negative response towards Democrats, and the same can be applied to urban and suburban voters with just flipping the parties. So as it stands now, while Democrats have seen drastic decreases in support, we don't see much from the side of their party in terms of investing in this parts of the country because they probably view it as no longer winnable. But as history has shown, Democrats have previously won there which means Democrats can win in the future. It may not be easy, and it may not be for the next 10 to 20 years, but to not invest in a third of the nation's population just simply because you haven't been winning there in recent history does not is not a winning strategy for the future because inevitably things are going to start to change, and the Democratic Party should probably be prepared for that. While there are some Democrats out there who do want to win in rural regions across the country, it does get difficult when the National Party does not want to help. But then you have to ask, do they really want the help of the National Party? They probably do in terms of funding, but they probably don't in terms of campaigning. It doesn't make sense to have Nancy Pelosi out in the middle of Bismarck, North Dakota, when she clearly wouldn't be a positively respected figure in that area. It would make more sense to have a local Democrat, someone who knows the voters, grew up in North Dakota, and can win by running on a campaign that's completely different from the like of Nancy Pelosi or really any other type of mainstream Democrat. What works in urban areas and suburban areas, which quite obviously does not work in rural areas. The unfortunate thing is Democrats have seemed to abandon those types of rural strategies and tried to run on otherwise mainstream campaigns, notably Amy McGrath in the state of Kentucky and a number of other failed campaigns that simply just don't work because of the region that they are in. So thank you guys so much for watching this video. Make sure to comment down suggestions below. Subscribe on the left if you haven't already and check out the Instagram and Twitter. At the bottom left of the screen, there's also a Discord server for you to go ahead and join. On the screen, there's a video you can watch and then a playlist for my 2022 election analysis videos. Again, thank you guys so much for watching and I will see you all tomorrow.